The Christian thinker Dallas Willard was once asked to describe Jesus in one word, and he gave a surprising answer. He said, relaxed. For author Megan Fate Marshman, it's the perfect answer as well, and it's one she's taken to heart after the sudden death of her husband. Author Megan Fate Marshman knows firsthand that life is full of challenges. In 2021, her husband died unexpectedly of a heart attack at the age of 36. Suddenly, she became a young widow with two small children. Instead of relying on her own strength, Megan chose to trust God. In her book, Relaxed, Megan shares how you can confidently allow Jesus to lead you through life's trials so you can find peace in your everyday circumstances. Well, Megan is here with us now. And Megan, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's such a pleasure to have you. Oh, it's an honor. Yeah, I'm excited to get into your story. But first, I got to ask you, do you really believe that relaxed is the perfect word to describe Jesus? Ooh, what a great question. <laughs> Yes, I think there's many words that could describe him and yet he's so big and so powerful and so beautiful that no words could encapsulate mm. who he is, but relaxed. And, but here's what I've come to realize. Relaxed is the byproduct, not the goal. Mm, a lot of us want good. to become like Jesus. And so we hear an idea like this and go, oh, relax. I just need to be more relaxed. But the yeah. truth is, I would describe Jesus as relaxed, but the surprise is the way by which he got there. Mm, I just, when I hear relaxed to describe <laughs> Jesus, I can't help but think of how he was in the boat mm -hmm. in the middle of the storm. Yes. How are we able as believers in Jesus to relax in chaos? Mm. Yeah, I wish I could just speak about this one outside of personal experience, just give all the right answers, but the truth is I learned this one right in the middle of my own storm. So as you guys already have shared, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, I, I can't just get used to sharing that my husband went to heaven three years ago and, mm -hmm. and that the words that would describe life would be anything but relaxed. And to be honest with you, still to this day, and so my friends always love that what the, the journey that the Lord's taken me on, which really is this book, mm -hmm. is a journey to which I've come to realize the superpower of grief while there's a whole lot of things that make life chaotic mm -hmm. and the storm that Jesus was a part of that, that was overwhelming to everyone else on the boat right. uh, in grief. As in, um, I've come to realize one of the greatest superpowers is that you begin to care a whole lot about the things that really matter and you stop caring about yeah. the things that don't. And, Jesus' heart was so attached to the Father's heart that he cared so much about the things that mattered, mm -hmm. but he was relaxed about knowing that God has the plan. God knows how he's planning to take us on the journey he's taking us toward. Mm -hmm. um, we can relax and settle in mm -hmm. and then also be passionate. To be relaxed doesn't mean that you're not angry or even worried or not passionate. No. To be mm -hmm. relaxed is to trust God's way enough that you can be all those things of what it means to be human, just like Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he literally carried the weight of the world on his shoulders, yeah. yet did it in such a way where he trusted his father's mm -hmm. way. And I think it's possible for all of us. And I'm not just someone telling anyone, I'm not just looking at you and saying, oh, it's totally possible for you, go do it. It's a hard truth that I've lived myself. Yeah, well, as we've talked about, I mean, 2021, is when your husband went to be with the Lord, 36 years old, which is so hard to believe. And you talk about this in the book that, you know, a lot of Christians, and you experience this yourself, like we take pride in being independent. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you had to learn after your husband went to be with the Lord, not to take pride in independence. And it's okay to ask for help. Can you just talk about that? <laughs> like, cause we all yeah. need to hear that. Yeah, because independence is a virtue in our culture, yet oftentimes it's a hindrance in the faith. And I mean, we hear all the time that we're not as we should be. And there's, you know, theologians refer to this as the sanctification gap, this gap between where I'm at and where I want to be mm -hmm. and the surprise that I learned, man, and especially in being a widow, but then I realized it's true for all of us, is that when we realize that we lack in any way, a lot of us, just like Adam and Eve, want to hide and cover it, or mm -hmm. we just want to get better at it. 
autonomously, mm -hmm. right? This is the great temptation that we don't even realize, and it's sneaky because it sounds great. So yeah. I sit in church and I hear a great word on pray without ceasing, and I think yeah. that's what I'm going to do. So if this is the goal, pray without ceasing, and then there's the reality of where I'm at. What yeah. do I do about the gap? What do we do yeah. about the gap? And I'd say there's three great temptations. I learned this from one of my theology professors. Mm -hmm. The first one would be to just kind of despair and give up, and I think a lot of people Despair looks like a lot of things, but within the church, despair can look like, I'm just going to settle for this valley of dry bones faith, try hard, mm -hmm. feel inspired on Sunday mornings, and keep trying, and just kind of settle. And maybe the person will inspire me to keep on going. The second temptation would be to go, wait, if I show up to church and you're going to tell me that I'm not as I should be, I'm going to go find a different level of success, some sort of ladder that I think I can climb, because I don't know how I'm ever going to get to a place of perfection. So the second temptation is just to jump out of the faith altogether. And the third one, and this was the most surprising to me when we realize we're not as we should be, is to just try to shrink that gap. Here it is by ourselves autonomously. You mm. sit there in church and you go, I'm going to get better at that. And it sounds well and good. And then we right. try. Right. And here's the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that in the fact that we aren't as we should be, the best response to the fact that we are not as we should be is not even our response. Mm. It's a God who comes to us to meet us precisely where we're at. And this is good news for everyone watching yes. because... God's not going to meet you where you're not, so you don't have to pretend to be anywhere other than where you're at. If you're mad, if you're sad, if you're grieving, if you're hopeless, if you're worried, wherever you're at, that's where God wants to meet you. And that's what this book is about, yeah. to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm. And that means it starts with being honest with precisely where you're at. He's not right. waiting for you to get it all together. He's not waiting you for you to jump to a better version of yourself. Friends, he wants to meet you right there. Yeah, and you talk about the one of the most important things throughout our entire faith journey, no matter where we're at in life, no matter where we're at in that journey, is to go to God. Mm -hmm. Go to God first and be honest with Him with where you're at. Yes. This whole book really follows along the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Very popular passage. Trust in the Lord with all yes. of your heart, right? Yep. Go to God. Trust in the Lord. And we all know this verse, but I wonder if we forget that we need to actually know what's in our heart. I mean, Proverbs 4 tells us that everything we do is from our heart. Mm -hmm. So literally, if you're wondering why you do what you do or why you don't do what you really want to do, <laughs> yeah. it all comes from the heart. And so the place that the Proverbs, the wisdom literature gives us is it says, this is where we need to begin to trust him. And one of the greatest <laughs> ways I've learned to do this was when my professor looked at me and he said, did you know that a wandering mind in prayer is a gift? And I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> right. So, you know, we all do this. Yeah. The, we're praying, yeah. and it's really lovely, and <laughs> thine is the kingdom, and their Lord. And then your mind begins to wander. Yeah. And then you realize that, like, 90 seconds later, you pause the prayer, mm -hmm. shame yourself back to the performance mm. prayer. So sorry. Not sure what happened there. Wow. I'm back. Um, this is what we do, right? And we just don't even realize this rhythm happens in our lives. Yeah. And then I've come to realize, wait, 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 wait. What if a wandering prayer truly is a gift? Because where's our mind wandering to in prayer, mm -hmm. probably the very thing that has our heart and what does the Lord want in prayer? Our heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Here's my encouragement. If you want to know where to begin this journey with wherever you're at, mm -hmm. where's your mind wandering to? Don't pause the prayer <laughs> ever again. Yeah, that's so powerful. Oh my gosh, Megan, we could keep talking. We're running out of time. But the last thing I wanted to ask you what are like one or two practical tips that viewers and listeners can take home with them to really trust in the Lord with all their, all their hearts? Yes. Practically, I'd say this. Think of a space, a place, and a time that can trigger your mind to remember to go to God instead of go to yourself. For me, Although I know I could forget to pray in the morning, I'll just give you this one tip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know I won't forget coffee. <laughs> so for me, I've created a brand new trigger that when I press that little coffee button, it's a trigger That's to go to God, let my mind go where it goes mm. and share it all. And the byproduct, mm -hmm. not the pursuit, the byproduct mm -hmm. of faith is a relaxed approach to everything you're facing, not because you have to fake a thing, but because mm. he meets you precisely where you're at and loves you right there. You know, I don't really do this that often with, with interviews, but can you, would you mind just praying for our viewers oh. and just in, in leading us in a prayer wherever they're at, just, yeah, just be honored. let the Holy Spirit lead, yeah. 
So here we are, Lord, maybe <laughs> surprised in this moment to stop just being a viewer and start to be an engager. So Lord, I pray for every viewer to engage with their heart. So Lord, we pray just as the psalmist prayed that you would search our heart. If there's anger in there, that we could be honest with you. If there's sadness, if we feel tired and apathetic and feeling like we're just not gonna get closer to you, that we've just kind of given up, or maybe that we're trying and it doesn't seem to be working. I pray right now that everyone listening to the sound of my voice would have the courage to be honest with you. Thank you for being so sovereign, so in control of all things and using all things for good to form us more into your likeness, Jesus. Use even this. How do you want to use even this to form us more into your likeness, Lord Jesus? We wait on you, but ultimately we want to know you and know how much you love us right here. So I pray right now that viewers would know your love by your grace, we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. Megan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being who you are. You are just an incredible communicator, incredible just vessel for the Lord. And I just thank you and God bless all that he's doing through you. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, Megan's book is called Relaxed, Walking with the One Who Is Not Worried About a Thing. Highly, highly, highly recommend you guys get this book. It is available nationwide.